Hey guys, what's up? I Sack the Tron here from One Hive Gazette here with the next attack meta video. This is attack meta number two, uh, talking about what's working, what's not as far as attacking goes. Town Hall 9, 10, and 11. Uh, so hopefully you guys can learn a thing or two from it. It does take a little bit longer than the average video to make. I uh, do have to gather quite a few replays and analyze the game more than typical. So do let me know if you enjoy this series and I'll be sure to continue doing it because uh, I'm definitely willing to put in the time if it's something that you guys find helpful. Uh, secondly, I want to say a shout out to Immoral Thieves. They're letting me uh, stay in their clan, record CWL gameplay in addition to what I can record in Genesis. Uh, so it will provide that outlet for that source, I should say, of high-level CWL gameplay. A lot of you guys uh, were also very generous, inviting me to come join your clans to record. So big thank you to everyone else who also offered. Uh, I might still join a few other clans if there's a you know a very competitive war going on. I don't want to limit myself too much. I want to kind of follow where the where the best CWL wars are to a certain extent. But that being said, uh, Immoral Thieves was very generous in reaching out to me so early, and I think I'll. Uh, you know, get most of my CWL gameplay from them because uh, they have been very gracious. And uh, if there is another war that's very competitive, I might stop by with another account uh, just to record some stuff if you guys are willing to. So you can always let me know, hit me up if there's a, a very competitive CWL war that you guys think I should be uh, he heading over to to see exactly what the attacks were and showing them on the channel. So anyway, that's that. Let's get to these attacks. We have attacks from pretty much every different Town Hall level, starting with Town Hall 11. Town Hall 11 at this point in the game is mostly dip attacks. That's what we're seeing as the main uh, skill. Uh, there are occasional Town Hall uh, 11 v 11, but typically those aren't three star attempts. They're just to solidify a two star. Uh, so if you're doing that kind of attack, you can just look at the Town Hall 10 strategies. Pretty similar um, for as far as what the Town Hall 11s are doing. Uh, to get those two stars, but typically we're looking at dip attacks. So that's what I want to focus on today. This is a meta video after all, so we're talking about what's being used uh, by most players. And in CWO matchups, it is dip attacks. This first one is an example of a mass bowler attack. Probably not the most common. We'll take a look at another Town Hall 11 attack as well. I wouldn't put this up there as the most common, but I think it is relatively underused. Uh, people did stop using it probably after bowlers got a nerf a little bit. But it still is effective if used right on the right base, especially on these bases at Town Hall 10 that continue to be spread out. Now, I typically build a compact base myself, but a lot of Town Hall 10s favor these spread out bases. And they do protect the Infernos in some circumstances, but if you can get the bowlers guided through with a few jump spells, uh, it can work out nicely like it does here for Andy. Uh, crushes this base, the... Eternal Tomb, I think, was pretty good timing. You want to use that early when most of your troops are still alive, but not too early, so you use it at a time that they would otherwise be going down uh, in large numbers. So, has a healer or two left over, which is always nice to see. Uh, both his heroes, or everything except the king, the warden, and the queen are both left up, though. Has the queen's ability, just a ton of troops, so crush this base. And uh, I'll get into a few like honorable mentions um, that I won't be able to show, but strategies that do work. I'll also talk about what we've been seeing less of recently, uh, but that'll be after we show the next attack uh, for Town Hall 11, which is a slightly different strategy. Uh, so nice attack to Andy, getting the three star there. Uh, let's move on to the next attack. And by the way, these are going to be spliced because I had to pre-record them. Uh, it would be too much to get these all from one war. So the next attack is from... Uh, Immoral Thieves, what's that? I have to look at my uh, screen, I have to kind of put my head up here. Uh, KNX, I think is the name. It's pretty small on my screen right now. But yeah, KNX, I think. And this is an example of kind of what else is working. It's going to be the air attack at Town Hall 11 uh, versus Town Hall 10s. Now, this is something that's relatively new. We didn't see this um, maybe a month ago. But it works out very well, and some of them involve bigger kill squads. But one thing I really liked about this attack is that it just came in, got the basics, got the, uh, I don't think it took anything but his heroes, a few wall breakers, that baby dragon. I think that was pretty much it, um, looking at what he's expended so far. Gets in there, gets the queen, gets one air defense. Um, the CC troops, I'm not sure, might be a cleanup attack. There might be like a lava hound in there or something. 
because I don't remember any CC troops coming out from this attack. So that's a bonus too. Doesn't even have to deal with CC troops. Goes ahead and sends the Warden in. And one thing, if you're going to use the Flying Warden, which I think can be very effective, make sure he's going in behind Balloons and Lava Hounds. You don't want him hitting one of those Seeking Air Mines uh, because that will completely take him out. And it's not worth it. That Eternal Tomb is too precious to allow him to go down to a Seeking Air Mine. So does a good job protecting him here. Drops in the Balloons. There's the uh, Eternal Tomb. Probably wasn't even needed because most of those Teslas were being tanked, but still uh, gets those balloons safely through a lot of damage that was potentially coming at them. I'm not exactly sure. Has that back end freeze. Uh, these level 7 balloons, especially within the Warden's uh, kind of range, the health boost they get, they are very tanky. So even after the Lava Hounds pop, these balloons are very able to take out the rest of the base. Uh, they are level 7 after all. Looks like he can swag a few haste, uh, haste spells at the top. That's one thing I noticed is the Immoral Thieves is not uh, above swagging, which is totally cool. That's not like a bad thing. It's just kind of something that we don't do much in Genesis because we've actually had failed attacks due to swagging. But it's something that uh, they do and they're able to do uh, with these awesome attacks. Real quick, an honorable mention to talk about. That is the Witch Bowler combination. Uh, so it's kind of similar to the first attack you saw, but it also uses some witches. I don't have an example, but I wanted to mention that as well. Uh, something we're not seeing is miners. Now that's been the same. That's been the case for a while. But yeah, miners are pretty much completely dead. That'll be the same for Town Hall 10. Mainly for Town Hall 11 dips, we're seeing some kind of bowler combination, possibly with witches, and then the air attacks. Uh, not many Valks, just that's more of a Town Hall 10 thing. Not many Valks on those dip attacks. Uh, just kind of the three I talked about. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be that for Town Hall 11 dips. Moving on to Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 11 attacks, which is possibly... Uh, the most important thing Town Hall 10s are doing at this point in the game right now. And this is Bossman SC coming at this base. Um, and he's doing the Valk attack, which is um, a very good way to get into these kind of ring type bases. Basically what you do is you come in with the Queen Walk on one side, the King and the Bowlers on the other. Now keep in mind this is somewhat base specific. It's when you have this kind of core compartment you want to get your Valks into with the Town Hall, but you have to clear out a funnel on both sides. Uh, this is something we've seen on the channel for quite a while, but it still you know, proves to be very effective uh, regardless. It's, um, it's something that like you know dragons aren't going to be able to do quite as easily uh if you can get the funnel created well enough in boss cs or boss sc is very patient which is important you don't want those valks to wander so you want to wait till that funnel is completely created drop down that jump then pretty much use most of your spells uh, right in that area at the town hall the cc troops did come out but he had those guys frozen uh so didn't even have to worry about them the dragon and the balloon weren't much of an issue so very good planning and uh, you can see percentage sometimes can be a bit of an issue, but typically the queen and the king with the bowlers will each clear out a small part of the base. And typically the Valks, uh, after they get the town hall, can grab a few extra buildings like they do here and uh, pull off the uh, the two star. Uh, what we're seeing is, you know, 50-ish 50-ish percentage. Uh, it's somewhat rare that you see much above 60. Uh, it is very difficult with these, you know, level 13, I think it is, point defense to go up there and get above like 65%, but it can be done. So nice attack. Let's move on uh, to another example of a Town Hall 10v Town Hall 11 attack. I'm going to show quite a few of these because it's such an important skill uh, for these high level wars. And the Town Hall 11s, as we saw previously, are the ones that are dealing with the Town Hall 10s. Uh, so what we're going to see is the Town Hall 10s going up to deal with the Town Hall 11s. That seems to be, in general, there are exceptions, uh, the most effective way to do it. Next attack, this one, uh, also boss man, boss man SC. I didn't uh, even realize that when I was making putting together the video. But yeah, he drops down the baby dragons on the outside as kind of a precursor to the Valks. This is another strategy that's very common. It's been, you know, being used for a while. Both these strategies have actually, uh, and they both work out very well. You don't, this is on a base that's a little bit more compact. You can get some of these trash buildings on the outside uh, pretty easily. Uh, especially because the air defenses on these bases tend to be farther in. If the air defenses are pretty exposed, uh, especially if there's Expos too and Archer Towers covering the trash buildings, can be a little bit harder. But keep in mind we have the level, uh, I think, 4, it, yeah, level 4 Baby Dragons. Now this was done with level 2 Baby Dragons, so that just shows how powerful it is. Because if he had his Baby Dragons two level higher, 
two levels higher, he would have done even better. But yeah, you use the baby dragons for percentage, then make a town hall dive with your Valks. You typically have pretty much all your spells too, so you can just invest everything that's not the baby dragons into getting that town hall taken out. And uh, the hope is that the, the baby dragons provide enough percentage that by the time you send your Valks in, you're good to go. Make sure you put your baby dragons down first. Uh, that way the eagle doesn't bother them and uh, you can just kind of make one dive and that way the eagle kind of, by the time it's you know really activated, the Valks are hopefully already bearing down in the town hall. Uh, last example, this is something that's a bit newer, but it's working against some of the new Town Hall 11 bases that are defending against Valks better. It's the dragon uh, attack strategy, and it typically requires a pretty big queen walk, so you got to invest uh, five healers usually, a couple rages at least, and your queen. Um, now you're allowed to... It, because you have so much time at Town Hall 11, the three minutes is only, uh, you have the same three minutes and you only need to get up about half the base taken out. It allows you to do these phased attacks more than it does if you're trying to do a three star attempt. I like that Barbarian by uh, How About the Wii. I think that's how his name is said. I like that Barbarian to distract the Wizard Tower. Very cheap way to protect the Wall Breakers. It actually kind of had a mini fail, but he had some extra Wall Breakers that he dropped and got his Queen into the base, which is very important. She has to take out the Defensive Queen as well as that Air Defense, both very important to the attack. And as you can see, the Infernos are pretty uh, deep into that base by the Town Hall, so he doesn't have to worry about the Queen being hit by the Inferno Towers. Uh, she'll be healed up pretty much the entire attack. So she continues to get percentage. Now right here, he knows the Queen's going to be encountering so much point defense that he can't keep raging her up. He doesn't have enough spells. So he decides to in instead invest a little bit of troops. Uh, I think like a Golem, the King, some Bowlers, stuff like that to kind of get out in front of the Queen, take out these defenses, make it a little bit easier on her. He still needs her to come around and get that Eagle taken out. So it was kind of a leap of faith on the funnel because as soon as she entered the base right at the beginning, she technically could have walked down towards the bottom. There was no compartment, no walls stopping her. But um, he had some faith, it worked out, the queen went up top, got the eagle with the help of the king and the bowlers. That's what you want to do. You can see he hasn't even deployed his dragons and it's already, I think, close to a minute and a half into the attack. But you don't need much time. You send in that lava hound, it doesn't move as fast as it used to, so the dragons can keep up with it. It does most of the tanking, it soaks up the traps. Um, it's not as much for the air defenses as it is for the traps and taking some of those Teslas, those Expos, before it goes down, although it does definitely help with the air defenses as well. The Dragons, um, if everything goes right, should be able to directly target the Town Hall almost, or at least that should be their second or third building. It uh, has the Rage too, which is kind of a nice benefit, because uh, the Dragons can be slow if they don't have the Rage. So it gets the Town Hall taken out, gets only maybe an extra... 10-15% from the dragons. The percentage comes from the beginning of the attack, so keep that in mind. Uh, but great attack. We're going to talk about a few uh, honorable mentions and a few that we're seeing less. Let me just pull that up real quick. Okay, another composition that I couldn't quite uh, find an attack for, but I have seen a little bit, is using bowlers and giants and some golems. Just a lot of tanky, high HP troops to get in there, get the base taken out, especially for relatively lower level Town Hall 11s, or bases that may be a little bit more spread out, but the pathing is still doable. So that's one more thing. Nothing really that we're seeing that's... Uh, that you can say is not being used anymore. We still have the Valks. A lot of those old strategies still work very well, so nothing's really been nerfed or taken away from the game. It's really just uh, we're seeing the new dragons in addition to the Valks. So mainly dragons and kind of Valks, possibly with baby dragons, depending on the base. Remember, baby dragons for compact bases uh, use more Valks and kind of do better funneling for a spread out ring type base. That's the main things we're seeing. Not much stuff has been phased out. Uh, but yeah, that being said, hope that makes sense. Let's go on to some Town Hall 9 attacks. Or not Town Hall 9 attacks, Town Hall 10 attacks. We still have uh, to show at least one Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 3 star. I wish I could show more, but they're just so rare right now. We're not seeing that many. Uh, real quick, I do want to say before I forget, I apologize if the audio sounds a tiny bit different than it does in most videos. Uh, it just, when I whenever I pre-record and use the, the uh, iMovie uh, application to record my my voice, it always sounds a little bit different. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it just sounds different. So if you guys notice that, that's the thing. It probably won't be the case because most videos I record as I actually go about showing stuff on my iPhone screen. So that's the difference in case you hear it. But anyway, Town Hall 10, 
mainly what we're seeing is these air attacks. You have to be creative. Uh, this is an awesome attack. It uses a queen walk basically to accomplish the main things it needs to take out before, uh, what's this, Fistol, I think that says, can start the air attack. Uh, goes in with the king and a few Valks to get the Inferno Tower taken out and the queen to get most of the CC troops, or all of the CC troops, get the uh, uh, defensive, qu defensive queen and an air defense as well. I think the king got an air defense too. So it gets the Inferno, two air defenses, the queen, the CC troops. That's typically what you need. And then if you're lucky, you have enough space for a back end freeze and a few hastes, uh, which he does here in this attack. Now I do wanna say, um, we're really not seeing a whole lot of other options because miners obviously are dead. Uh, and also, uh, one more thing to say, I'm kinda a little bit uh, jumbled up right now, but. Uh, we have t we used to see bowlers used as, as the beginning of this attack. Valks are what we're seeing more. I think bowlers got the reduction in hit points, and just based on the bases we're seeing, Valks are going to be better for using at the beginning of your hybrid attacks. Uh, you can try mass Valks even. I That worked for me, as you guys saw in my last live attack video. That can work too, but for the most part, you need a hybrid attack that uses some kind of air troops, even if it's only minor, sometimes just a few balloons and a haste to get in there and get the Inferno. You've got to be creative at Town Hall 10 because there's not that many things that are working right now. So yeah, pretty much that's the only Town Hall 10 attack I can show. Um, that's just is, is what it is at Town Hall 10 right now. It's a very tough game not seeing that many three stars uh, at this point in the game. All right, Town Hall 9. We're going to start off with an attack by Paul. This is an example of probably the most common Town Hall 9 attack we see. Uh, this is on a relatively lower level base, I guess with the Expos, but concept is still there pretty much. This can be applied to a ton of different bases. Uh, it can be made to work. This is the Stoned Hobo attack. Uh, pretty much we, something we've seen for you know quite a while. I wouldn't say a long time, but definitely has been established in the game for a significant amount of time. Uh, the Wizards, I've made a video on this before, the Wizards are becoming a bigger part of the attack by clearing out stuff for the funnel. Um, I hope I didn't show this attack before. I might have actually, as I watched this again, I might have shown this attack already on the channel. It looks familiar from that funneling video. Uh, so I do apologize for that, guys. I don't think I can really sub it out at this point. I'm kind of set on the attacks I'm showing, but... Uh, I guess maybe look at it through a different perspective. Look at it through an attack meta perspective instead of a opener perspective. And some of you guys might not know what I'm talking about if you haven't seen my last video a few videos back on kind of openers. But uh, just moving beyond that, it's talking about the, the strategy since you've already seen the attack. Basically, it's a very versatile strategy. The idea is that you're getting the golems, the bowlers, the king and the queen, and typically you want higher level heroes for this because if your heroes aren't doing much damage, the bowlers they do a little bit but not enough to make it worth it to bring all three of those golems. Typically, if you're going to bring three golems, you want at least level 20 to 25 heroes and up. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You want to get very deep into the base and give your hogs an easy job. Get most of the giant bombs triggered and invest most of your spells on your kill squad, whether it's jumps, whether it's rages, and maybe use one heal, two at most. I wouldn't even use two. I'd use one most of the time. Uh, sometimes you can get away with none. But invest only a small number of heal spells on your hogs. You typically bring 10 to 14 hogs just to take out the defenses that your kill squad can't reach. So it's a very powerful uh, kill squad driven attack with the hogs kind of playing a secondary role. Works very well on a variety of bases. Lava Hound can make things tricky because it will separate the queen, uh, but even still it can work against Lava Hound bases too to a certain extent. So nice attack to Paul. We're gonna take a look at a number of Town Hall 9 attacks because we're seeing quite a bit Town Hall 9 and I'll talk about, you know, as I do for every Town Hall level, a few things I wasn't able to cover in this video. Um, so yeah, moving on to the next attack, Tornado Top Hat, also from Genesis, and he's doing a variation of this. This is such a popular strategy, I wanted to show um, kind of the same thing, but with a variation. That's the Queen Walk. Um, it's funny because in hindsight, the healer nerf with them being able to trigger traps didn't do much to actually stop Queen Walks, even at Town Hall 10 too, but especially at Town Hall 9, we still see it. Uh, sometimes you have to bring the extra healer if you're going deep into the base, but in this case, I believe it's just kind of an outer Queen Walk, and the main reason is this guy is giving so much value to an outer Queen Walk. A lot of these defenses are accessible. You can see the Wizard Towers in the Town Hall, the CC, 
uh, or taking up a lot of space on the inside of the base, making the queen uh, point defense, a lot of those more valuable things uh, towards the outside, reachable by a queen walk. Now, that being said, uh, this isn't the best anti-three-star base, but there are anti-three bases that resemble this and have the same features with the queen exposed. And that's when you want to do a queen walk when it's worth it, when your queen can get some good value. Uh, so it comes in completely separately from the queen. Uh, the CC troops are already dealt with, so it doesn't have to worry about that. Just comes in at a different angle. The queen already created the funnel a little bit, but the wizards will help too. And he'll send in uh, his uh, golems, the king, the bowlers, get those guys deep into the base with a jump, and then from there, he can send in some hogs as needed. But the queen's getting some great value. She did stop right here, um, and he has one rage left. I'm not sure if he uses it on the queen or not. Can't remember, because uh, she is going to deal with the defensive king in that expo in just a minute, which will be quite a lot of damage. But up top has the jump, the king, the bowlers making their way through. Right there, the queen is in the base. I think that's a good decision for the rage. Drop it on the queen. She's an important asset. You don't want to lose the queen in those four healers. She's probably your best end game troop at Town Hall 9. Um, and Town Hall 10 too. You want that queen up, especially if there's healers on her. So it uh, doesn't lose much from not dropping the rage on the king or the bowlers either. They still get deep into the base. The golems still do an excellent, excellent job tanking. You want to do one thing to add. These stoned hobo attacks, when the, um, when the pathing is predictable enough that you know your golems will be tanking, you don't want to do it on a base that's too spread out. You can do it on spread out bases, but you don't want to do it on a base that's spread out to the point where you can't predict the pathing. That means the golems might go off to one side and the bowlers and the heroes might get targeted, which can be very dangerous for this attack. I've done a, you know base destruction videos on this in the past uh, illustrating this concept. You want to make sure the golems are the ones doing the tanking. That's the main thing you want to look for on a base. It's not really the size of the base or the level of it. Um, it does have something to do with the level of your heroes. Higher level heroes are better for this. Uh, but beyond that, look at the pathing. If you can predict where the golems are going to go, uh, you might have a pretty good chance at three-starring the base. Okay, getting a little bit tired of talking, but I'm going to keep fighting through it. Only have a few more attacks to show left. This one is an air attack by Raj from Immoral Thieves, and it illustrates the uh, probably one of the two air attacks that we see right now, at least the common air attacks. There are other variations, but um, one of them is the less invasive with the kill squad. It's if the queen is exposed and the CC troops are accessible, dropping down the heroes basically, getting the queen, getting the CC troops, then using the zap quake and even the skeleton spells if you can, but it's still worth it, the Zap Quake investment on certain bases. Uh, the Skeleton Spells are much cheaper. You can sometimes use only three uh, Skeleton Spells instead of the whole five investment of the two Zaps in the Quake. Uh, but that being said, it's still worth it. Uh, he drops down the Heroes for the Defensive Queen and the CC Troops. Very easy trade there. Uh, zaps the Middle Air Defense, which is a pretty good decision. You want to, and I, I can't pause at this unfortunately, but you want to, I just want to make this point. Zap the air defense that is um, not going to, it's not an outlaw. You don't want to zap an air defense that's on its own side of the base. Zap the central one because if you zap the air defense that's around a lot of defenses, now there's no longer a spot for your hounds to sit at to tank for your balloons. So in a way, you're kind of making your balloons uh, very endangered as they travel through that part of the base if there's no air defense because the lava hounds won't tank in a central location there and therefore your balloons will be at a bigger risk so don't take out an air defense unless you're taking out the air targeting defenses around it i've talked about that concept in the past but it's very important um zap the air defense that's probably near another one that isn't uh gonna make it so there's a lo location on the base where there's air targeting defenses but no air defense that's how balloons die, when there's nothing tanking for them. Um, and that occurs when there's no air defense for the lava hounds to sit at. Uh, there's no central air defense between all the uh, air targeting defenses like archer towers, wizard towers. I uh, tried my best to explain that. I think that made sense, um, hopefully. So let's take a look at one more Town Hall 9 attack. This is the more invasive kill squad based attack you want to do on certain bases where you can get deep into the base and... You want your kill squad to go deep, but but not wide. And that's kind of a a weird thing to say, but it's it's true. You want, like, and this is a perfect base for it, an alley for your kill squad to go down where they don't have to spread out too much, where it's a very direct shot 
into the middle of the base to get as many air defenses as possible. You're not worried about outlying defenses. You're, you're not even that worried about your kill squad being flanked. You just want to go directly to the middle of the base and hopefully get even three, maybe even four air defenses taken out. You'll see how much uh, Tenacious D gets taken out on this attack. Uh, drops down the jump, it connects pretty much every air defense on the base, so everything works out great. The golems move forward, has the rage for the king, pops the king's ability, uh, the queen sits back in that rage as well, along with the bowlers. The golems spread out and do all the tanking, and you can see it was pretty direct. His troops didn't spread out that much, they're pretty much just going straight into the base and getting... Uh, deep enough that they can get some of these air defenses taken out beyond the first two. That's always a bonus. You typically only need only need two air defenses, the CC troops and the defensive queen. But on these attacks, um, if you're bringing a big kill squad, sometimes it's worth it, to, worth it to try to plan out to get even a third air defense and look to get more defenses like archer towers or expos taken out as well. If you're bothering to go, you know, deep into the base, you might as well just go for it. And this is a great example. His Lava Hounds really don't need to tank that much. Now they do end up busting, I think, which works out perfectly. But um, you can sometimes get more air, defense, more air defenses than you even need to, which makes it much easier on your balloons, on your Lava Hounds. So yeah, awesome attack there by Tenacious. A few things to mention. I didn't, this is the last attack, by the way. And look at those awesome haste spells that he swagged almost. Um, but anyway, I didn't mention the HBVP or the Grundinator, or the all these different names people have. It's where you bring the four rages, the P.E.K.K.A., the Valks, the Healers, the Bowlers. You guys know what I'm talking about. Check out my specific HBVP uh, video, the attack strategy, maybe five or six videos back. Uh, that's sp uh, specific if you want to know how to use that. I wasn't able to find one of those uh, for this video, so that's still being used very commonly. Also, we're seeing Valks. Didn't show many Valk attacks, but along with the HBVP, we occasionally see Mass Valks or Govaho and occasional dragons and stuff like that. I'll make a Town Hall 9 kind of grab bag video soon probably showing some variety attacks at Town Hall 9 because there's so much that's working right now. But those are just the main things I was able to draw from. We're not seeing as many giant based attacks that, like we used to, like the... Uh, with the healers on the eight giants or whatever. That's much less common. And finally, the last thing is we're not seeing many mass hog attacks that we thought we'd see as soon as the giant bombs got the nerf. We're still seeing uh, kill squad based attacks, not just the throw 40 hogs into the base in GG. That's not what we've seen. It might work, it might work for some people, but it's not the meta right now because not, not many people are using it. So hope this video helped. It was a long video. Let me know if you guys like it and I'll continue to do these videos once a, once a month, once every two months, having trouble talking uh, as needed. So thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped and let me know if you have any questions below. I'll try to get to them. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.